Immugene is a clinical stage immune oncology company. Its lead product is HERVAX, a B cell peptide vaccine for the treatment of gastric cancer. Please welcome their CEO and their CTO, Ms. Leslie Chong and Nick Ede to the stage to tell you more. Thank you. So I was recently featured in the Australian newspaper as the unicorn against the cancer fight. And I was considered a unicorn because the rarity of chief executive officer in a woman uh, in a, at a company. And I'm happy to see that there were a few uh, CEOs that were women today. So good job, everybody. So uh, my name is Leslie Chong, and I'm the CEO of Immugene. And we're squarely in the immuno-oncology therapy space my forward-looking statement. So imaging, what are we doing? We're squarely in the immuno-oncology space whereby we enlist your body's immune system to create the drug against a certain cancer type. That's exactly, it, in a nutshell, what we do. So what I'm going to go over with you today is where the science came from. We, it originated at the Medical University of Vienna, one of the Europe's uh, longest and oldest European medical centers. Uh, we have a broad pipeline. Hervax is an anti-HER2 um, therapy, and we have what we're calling Mimitos, which is a mimic of other therapies out there. So that's, that's increasing our pipeline and our franchise. We have already completed a phase one with Hervax, and I'll share with you the data. And we're just about to get back into the clinic with our phase 1B2 study that's just on the verge of recruiting. We have a tight share registry in that we have Platinum Asset Management as our highest shareholder. Uh, we're going to have, within the weeks to months to about a year to, to on and on for the next three years, you'll have fairly rich uh, and quality news flow. And my leadership and management team alone, I think I could probably do a slide presentation on that. Um, my board of director member, Dr. Axel Hoos, happens to be one of those guys that when Mark Zuckerberg wants to give money to cancer, or when the Pope wants to learn about immuno-oncology, they call upon Axel Hoos, who's currently the senior vice president at GSK. And obviously, I'm going to say this, I think it's an attractive valuation given, given the size and where we are in, in cancer therapy. So we're in immuno-oncology because it's putting the word in front of cure, uh, in front of the word cure in front of cancer that's never been done before. People like Ron Walker, Jared Roughhead, uh, has deemed a cure from medicines that are in invoking your immune system. So what's different about us in that, so Herceptin is made in a large GMP vat in a factory. So there's synthetic antibodies that they inject into you. What we think is a better way to go is to get your B cells to make that medication, those antibodies. And we know the market is huge. You have monoclonal antibodies. These are synthetically made antibodies uh, like Herceptin, Rituximab, Yervoy, which actually Axel Hoos was the clinical lead for. Um, and Optivo making billions of dollars each year. This is just a 2015. Um, I anticipate that it's, it's grown double fold in, in 2016, and I'm waiting for those records. But all these an antibodies are manufactured in a factory, whereas we think we can enlist your B cells to make the same antibodies and maybe even one better. We have a platform play here. Our first off, Hervax, was computer-aided program. We have now a platform that we've secured through an IP, and it's a proprietary way of making um, B-cell peptide therapies. So how many of you have had a flu shot or a tetanus shot? What were the side effects? Quite minimal, right? You might have had a runny nose, and with your tetanus, maybe an inflammation. In those, uh, in those therapies, your B cells are invoked. Antibodies are created. If you've had a tetanus shot, if you ever thrust your hand into a rusted nail, if you've got tetanus, your B cells will remember that and will formulate the antibodies against it. That's the concept behind our therapy. We know that it's safe. We've got a nice safety package from our original phase one study with 10 metastatic breast cancer patients. The efficacy is there because we saw this in the phase one and that antibodies were indeed produced against that particular target. Durability, because by the nature of your B cells, you get that nice memory. So much like your tetanus, it will create the antibodies whenever it sees the malignant target. 
And because of vaccination, you could have fairly infrequent visits to the doctor, so I think there's a lot of uh, uh, savings there for all kinds of different insurance systems or what have you. It's about the tenth of the cost to make these products, and so for a pharma company, this allows great flexibility in terms of pricing. So Hervax, we'll talk about that. That's our first off in-clinic product. So basically how it works is that you get the peptide injected into your system. Your B cells then create the antibodies against that particular target. So those little hair-like, worm-like things are called receptors, and you need to bind to them such that they're, not, they're no longer sending signals to your cells to multiply at such an accelerated rate, but then that's the malignancy. So it's color-coded, so as you can see, the antibodies go, and then there goes your tumor. And my former company, Genentech Roche, has a product called Herceptin out on the market. It garners roughly about 6.5 billion a year, so the market is huge. So that formulation, the initial formulation, was given to 10 metastatic breast cancer patients at the Medical University of Vienna. And what we found was, indeed, the safety package was quite nice. The ladies only had um, an, an inflammation in their injection site, along with the antibody titers that were produced, and as well as other immune, immunity that was uh, caused by our, our injections. So all those helpful things happened, and this was wildly published in a peer-reviewed document. We took that formulation and we wanted to make it much more clinically and commercially viable. In that, I wanted Genentech Roche to come in and say, this is pharma grade, we don't have to do anything with it. And so we took the first generation, we binded the peptides, and that invoked two times uh, the amount of antibodies in the preclinical model. We went further and we changed out the conjugates and adjuvants, and that invoked 20 times the antibodies. So this is the formulation that we're taking into our phase two, phase 1B2. And when we looked further, when we uh, dosed mice with this formulation, six months later they were still producing the antibodies. So you can imagine what that is in human years. If you were a gastric patient, you were a cancer patient that came in, got your injection, you wouldn't necessarily maybe have to come in uh, so frequently to the clinic. Again, we looked at it uh, further. Um, we thought the antibody titers that were produced with our own formulation of Hervax was great, but we also wanted to see how it did in the combination with uh, Herceptin, which is the Genentech Roche drug. Now, this data is really nice if we ever wanted them to uh, play nicely with them and they wanted to take it on. So indeed, in combination, it created better, better and bigger antibodies. So that formulation, we have opened up our study called Phase 1B2 in the gastric cancer. Gastric cancer also has these HER2 proliferation. So uh, we will look at the first Phase 1B because we want to see how it combines with the backbone, new backbone chemo. And then we'll, once we obtain a recommended Phase 2 dose, we'll go right into a Phase 2. And it's a randomized study. These are all open label, so throughout we can release um, news about it. Gastric market opportunity is huge. Uh, gastric cancer happens to be one of the leading causes of death, um, specifically in the Asian market. And we like the idea of the B cell peptide uh, because it invoke, it's invoking your own B cells to be basically a manufacturing for your medicine against a particular kind of cancer. So we want to do this again. And Mimitope is ba basically taking a known or existing um, uh, monoclonal antibodies, such same thing as what Ron Walker took or, or Jerry uh, Roughhead took, and we reverse engineer that and create a B cell peptide vaccine with all the benefits of having your B cells make the antibodies. And we've, uh, we've secured the patent on those, and we will likely announce which candidate that we're going to go forward in the next few months. So we select the mimetope, and upon selection, we then create the vaccine and we do the immunization, the clinical trials, and hopefully the same thing happens where your B cells are invoked to make the antibodies against a particular target, cancer target. We went broader in that we just uh, acquired a full library from the Baker IDI of these things called arginine modulators. They're small molecules or amino acids that help your immune system work that much better. And this has been recently um, as last month validated by a company called Calif Insight, who bought 
and arginine from a company called Calathera for 53 million um, upfront payment with 430 million um, all up milestone. Now, that wasn't developed, it didn't take millions of dollars to develop that particular arginine at Calathera. It took thousands. And because it's at the preclinical model when they're absorbing these and partnering, I myself have been um, part of similar deals at Genentech with another small molecule, and that milestone payment was 1.1 billion. So I know these things happen quite frequently, actually. And so we have a whole library of them that we'll be developing. When you look at the valuation and deal sizes, uh, on the average, it's about $514 million for immuno-oncology, and when I spoke to a very large fund house in the U.S., they told me that that's, that's what we could expect for our deal. So I said, sold. <laughs> and in terms of just the selective milestone deliverables and announcements that we'll have, we'll, we'll start um, announcing our recruitment and, and the activity of the patients on that phase 1B2 study. And then along with our mimetope development path, we'll give you updates on those. And also the arginine modulators, I think that could be our dark horse in the running, but we should have uh, news, um, frequent news fairly quickly. So my team. So I have roughly about 19, over 19 years of experience in um, oncology development. And I have four drugs already out on the market and some of them um, here in Australia. Dr. Axel Hoos, as I said, a senior vice president of GSK, who's on our board and very active with us. Um, Paul Hopper is my executive chairman. He also has several different companies here in Australia, one of which is Virolytics, who market size was roughly about 25 million two years ago, and now it's at, it's at 300 million. So he's done this, he knows how to do it. Um, and then also uh, Dr. Ursula Wiedemann, who is our CSO, as well as Dr. Nick Eid, who's my CTO, who's here, who has a, who has a PhD in peptide science. So I think we've amassed a, a good, good amount of people here. So our strategy simply is, is we're not going to market this drug per se, but we'd like to partner or, it, or out license it. And we think that with the data that we'll have, it could be as early as at the end of this year or early next year. Our stocks, um, it oscillates between, uh, well, it was at 0.7 just merely two months ago, and it's gone all the way up to 2.1. I think it goes back and forth between 1.6 and 1.9 currently this week. Um, platinum Acid, as I said, ha is, the, uh, is our highest shareholder and um, my uh, executive chairman being the third largest holder. So I think I've gone over all the value proposition of imaging, and I'm happy to entertain any questions you might have at the back of the room. Thank you.